Hi everyone and welcome to welcome back to the School of Light and another episode of the Image Breakdown. And I am absolutely stoked today to have the wonderful Tom Hill with us. G'day, Tom. Hi guys, how you doing? Now mate, you're in the UK, yeah? I am, yeah. Uh, Northeast UK, just up near Scotland. Wicked. Well, thanks for joining us, man. And look, just as I do with all of these, the the image breakdown is a series where I am grabbing uh, artists who I respect, I think do work that uh, by looking at some of their images will really add to you if you're watching, no matter whether you are a new light painter or experienced. Um, and the cool thing about Tom is if you've watched any of the recent episodes of the image breakdown, I'm grabbing people that have been around for a long time. Now, the interesting thing is Tom in relative terms uh, is sort of, I don't know, like a mid sort of 2015. Which I, I still think of myself as a newbie very much. Um, and I get to speak to people like Frodo and some of the other people that you've had on your channel. And they're sort of saying, oh yeah, I did this image 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and I didn't, I didn't have a camera 10 years ago. <laughs> no, no. Well, look, the beautiful thing about you, Tom, and, and, and the reason that I was very, very keen to have you uh, come on nice and early is Ever since I've been seeing your work, it's always leapt out at me. When I'm scrolling through my social media feeds and I see one of your images, a couple of things happen. The first thing that happens is I know it's yours. Is, <laughs> yes. Right, which is beautiful. And I reckon that is, uh, I, I, I talk a lot about this, is what, what differentiates someone as being an artist to just being a, a, a thing. And, and, and if, I see one of, if I see an image and I know it's yours, that says something. And the other reason I love your images, uh, well, well, we'll get onto that, but, but something, something I wanna share with people about you is we met in Berlin at Light Up Berlin last year, and I was lucky enough to be hiding in the corner, uh, down in one of those amazing bunkers, uh, oh, the bunkers were cool. Oh, they were amazing. Watching you deliver a um, a workshop. And I, 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 I'm getting goosebumps because <laughs> you have this really beautiful ability to uh, communicate um, what is a phenomenally technical thing because that's how I'll describe your light painting. Now, I'm going to pop on the screen now the particular image of yours that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Uh, but through this and afterwards... I'm going to send people down the Tom Hill rabbit hole because your work, <laughs> you're totally man. If you, I don't care if you're an experienced light painter or sp particularly if you are new to light painting by studying your work, I think that I think people will add a really valuable little nugget to their, um, to their, uh, you know, um, to, to, to their light painting uh, kit. And that is the things that I've written down here notes. I always I make notes about people and I have made some <laughs> notes here. You are so precise. Your work, it, it, it's, pre, it's precise. Now, I know that you, I saw you go, oh, whatever, but. You know, <laughs> no, I know, I know what you mean. I know where you're coming from. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's precise it, and it's bright and vibrant. You, you have, um, uh, you use quite simple tools. Uh, yep, to create, simple. to create incredible images. So enough about, uh, a good, a good introduction. Well, thanks for coming along, mate. I'm going to bring the image up now. Now, when when I invite people onto an image breakdown, I look at their work, and for you, it was deep. And I could have I could have lunged at a couple of quite obvious images, but this one jumped out at me because it it does everything I love about a light painting image. It draws you in. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of elements to it. It's got a lot of elements. It's got a one. lot of elements. <laughs> and oh, it took a while. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to be like a broken record, but if you're watching this, people that are watching this, you've got to do something. And and I've had this image on my screen now for, for you know, how long we've been going for five minutes and it's drawing me in and I'm seeing things that I have not seen in the image from before. There's a lot to break down in this photograph. So, mate, let's get into it. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Right. Right. Before we start getting into the technical aspects, you know, we're not mm -hmm. going to talk about f-stops and all that. But before yeah. we get into it, there's a theme through your photography of um, uh, 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 symmetry, 
of, you know, and, and so talk to me a little bit about what you're thinking about before putting the idea together. Um, hit, mm. hit us with that, man, because it's a, it's That's a, a it's really a interesting one, yeah. actually, because um, sort of I think there's sort of two, two sort of strands of light painters almost in that uh, there's a lot of people I know when they're light painting who very much try and tell a, a story. Yep. Um, and they're the sort of they're driven by a sort of emotion and feelings and things like that. And they're trying to, to put something across in their images. Yep. I would say there's almost a second strand, which is I suppose I'd sort of see them as, as, as technical light painters, if yeah, you know what I mean. Totally. They're not necessarily driven by trying to tell a story. Yep. But how on earth can I make this complicated shape that I've got in my head yep. in in light um effectively is this even possible and i'm very much fall into the second category i've got like my background is very much scientific it's uh, you know i was a, did a degree in physics i work in it it's all that sort of technical side of things so i don't tend when i'm doing my images i'm not generally sort of thinking about something as it were yeah. other than how do i create this image um and that's actually one of the things that i love about light painting is for me it's a it's a switch off in that because i'm trying to be precise i have to concentrate very much on my movements and i guess it's kind of like yoga or something like that in that you, you've got to concentrate <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean you've got to concentrate yeah, yeah, yeah. so much on what you're doing that you can't think of anything else yeah and that means you can sort of de-stress yeah. so what i tend to do is um my stuff tends to come to me when i'm not light painting if i go out without any ideas i tend not to be brilliant um so what i tend to do is you know sort of when i'm sitting around few days before I'm going out I'll be just sort of sketching things on pieces of paper um, and I think very much of um, layers so yeah. I generally start with something simple and then yep. work out what happens if I overlay something else over the top of it yep. or I move it and repeat it or something along those lines so re repetition movement translation rotation all of that kind of stuff yep. trying to work out what happens to a simple shape if you then translate it and scale it and, and muck about with it a bit yeah. so in that particular case i had drawn out on a piece of paper i don't think i've, I've got it knocking around but i had drawn out on a piece of paper something that was almost exactly that not quite but wow. you know yeah. close enough um i mean the drawing was terrible but uh, <laughs> the idea was there you know <laughs> it was circles and things like that i'll just see if uh, I'd, i'm not sure whether just a second i've got uh, All right. a bunch of stuff here i don't think i've got that particular no, exact no, no. one uh but nice t-shirt oh, by actually. the way oh cheers yeah gone for the older yeah you can kind of see here that I've, i think that might have been no the one where way. i was thinking about it uh so i do that kind of thing where i basically draw them out on a piece of paper and i'll take those with me um in my pocket <laughs> so that i can remind because the thing is like as i say if i haven't got if i haven't got a plan i quite often just go uh, well, I end up repeating things I've already done, and yes. I always want to try and come up yep. with something that I haven't or already done. So I draw out the things that I haven't already done and take those with me. And then, if none of them work, I can always just fall back to something that I know how to do. That's amazing. I've never, I've never, um, I've never known of anyone to actually. I've thought about it. I like, I, I, I'll have an idea and I'll write an idea like a location. So I'll go, mm -hmm. go solve it. But actually writing it down. Um, yeah, it's amazing. That 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 is really thinking about what you're going to be doing. Do you think that that um, that that step, that planning step of writing things down, uh, really at like at the end you go uh, like, is that an important step for you? Do you or you don't do you, do? You... It's an important step for getting it right uh, yeah. because I can't do it unless i can work out how to do it uh yeah. if you know what i mean if i yeah, tried to ad lib totally. it it probably wouldn't work um partly because sometimes to get the, the the accuracy on it i sometimes need to sort of mark out places where i i need to start i need to work out you know how far do i need to move to the right in order yes. for this to line up correctly yeah. so in order to do that i then need to i need to work out in advance what i need to know if you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it's going to be guesswork. I mean, sometimes I do make them up. Sometimes I just go in there and just go, right, let's give it a shot. We'll do a circle totally. here, we'll do a circle and, and yeah. see how it works. Yeah. But for the more complicated stuff, there tends to be a bit of a plan going on somewhere. All righty, mate. So let's get into it. You're in a tunnel somewhere. You've got the camera set up. Let's just step us through 
reasonably succinctly <laughs> otherwise because you could it could, feels like could be, yeah yeah it feels, what what are the steps and 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 just break down what what i'm looking at on the screen here because there's a there's a not only a lot of elements i'm just there's a lot of tools there's not that many actually but mm. it, it's a sort of swapping stuff over so let's start off with the basics obviously camera on tripod yeah nah, fine fairly wide angle i was on a uh, i'm on an aps-c camera 16 mil so that's probably about a 21 mil on a yep. full frame something like yep. that um i generally work iso 200 f 6.3 uh yep. i only mention it because a lot of people work at very low isos and i tend to work slightly higher yeah good um uh, yeah the only thing i find it picks up um because obviously anything that's blown out is going to be blown out anyway. If it's yeah. white, it's going to blow yeah. out. And I find it helps bring out the colors in the sort of mid-tones yeah. and things like that a little totally. bit more. I know, obviously, I'm taking everything in raw so I could adjust it in post if I want, but I prefer yeah. to look at it on the screen. Can. Yep. Totally. So had that. I already had, from a previous shot, uh, a flash gun on a tripod stand Nice. in the middle of the tunnel. Um, and I'd adjusted that. So it was at shoulder height. Yep. Um, and the reason for that is because everything that I do with the circles is spun around my my shoulder. Makes uh, sense. So I know that if I've got a flash at, at shoulder height, yeah. when I flash it, it will be exactly in the center of my circles yeah. uh, because dead yeah. straightforward. Nice. So nice. that was prepared. Yeah. Um, and then what I've done is I use, uh, have I got any of them knocking around? Not sure if I do. I use little squares of luminous tape um, yes. that I can put on the floor. Yep. So that I know where certain elements are. Brilliant. And in this case, I needed to know exactly where the middle of my shot was so yep. that I could make sure everything was symmetry. Yep. So I'd put down a tiny little piece of luminous tape on the floor, hidden it behind a rock so that the camera couldn't see it. All yep. good. So then the actual number of tools used is fairly minimal. I used uh, this thing here, uh, which is basically a, an acrylic tube, plexi tube from Light Painting Paradise, Yep. Um, which was in a sort of stroby mode like that nice. but the key thing is they've got these new connectory things which yes. allow you to stick stick things yes. on the end i saw that they're great yeah and the what most people use them for is connecting two tubes together but what i've done is basically taken some little bits of acrylic rod yeah beautiful and sanded them down so that they're yep. little jewels uh, and you basically if you put those in the end it just gives you a little white point they're gorgeous on the end yep um so that was effectively in the center, what yeah. you've got is you've got a complicated pattern that was done with a Magi light, yep, which beautiful. is effectively a little mini pixel sticky thing. Yep. Um, and I designed my own patterns for those. That's one of the things that I would say to everybody is if you want your stuff to stand out, yeah, don't use the stuff that comes on the, the stick because everybody's nope. got those. Yep. Uh, and all I do is I basically open up a little thing in Photoshop and I draw patterns manually by hand and Gorgeous. then i repeat them Gorgeous. Uh, and that's it so, so that's what the, off... that's what the calligraphy that's what the words are yeah uh that's uh well actually uh, let me remind myself of what's in... <laughs> i can't even remember what's in there yeah the words are um the ones on the outside that's done with this thing and basically yes. to create the words what i actually did was um if i remember rightly that one says copyright tom hill um <laughs> it just say, it's, it says it in elvish yeah <laughs> So uh, there's basically it's great. A web I love that. yeah, there's a website where you can basically type in English and it'll give you back Elvish runes. Yeah, uh, and I put the Elvish runes into Photoshop and then put them on my, my stick and spin it round. So anyway, um, I did the center one first from memory. So I started off with um, a one of these. Yeah. Uh, and I spun it in a circle using yep. my shoulder. So you basically stand that way and you just spin it, uh, yep. preferably without hitting your headphones. Yeah. Spin it in a circle. <laughs> Yep. like that and that's all good um so that gave you the center sort of strobe circle thing yep now what i then wanted to do was add another two circles yes uh that were on either side of it but without the solid center so what you do is that you basically you take off the the orange tube yep. uh, and you replace it with the strangest idea in the world a black tube no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that way you don't get anything in the middle but you still get the light out uh, beautiful end. i nearly did a, i nearly a, a couple of years ago i nearly did a um a, a, for april fool's day i nearly released a, a black a ball of light head <laughs> yeah i think well, eric i think eric eric Perret did the same with the tube he was going to release a black tube 
I think he has actually released a black tube so that he can get gaps. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, so that's all I use the black tube for. Is, is if I want to make a circle that's bigger than my arm, I attach a black tube to my torch and then attach yeah. the piece of acrylic on the end. And that allows Gorgeous. me to create a circle of any size I want. So what I did is because I had the point on the floor, I basically took two steps yep. forwards, spun a circle, yeah, nice. went back to the center, took two steps to the backwards and spun a circle. And that way I knew that they would be equally spaced. Yeah, beautiful. And that gives you the two on either side. Yeah. Now, I'd kind of worked out how far I needed to move in order to get it to line up with the center bit correctly in advance. Um, so that's why I knew it was about two steps. The yeah. same with the, the Magilight stuff, basically. Yeah, once totally. I'd the two, once I'd done the two steps, I did another three steps yeah. to draw the rune circles. Yeah. Um, and then in the middle of the center sort of orb circle thing. So I basically just used a, a simple light pen. Basically, yep. this is one of the light painting paradise ones, but yep. a finger light would do anything along those lines. Um, and that was for the inner circle. So basically same concept is just standing there, making sure that I was in the same center point that I was when I did the main one. Yeah, exactly. And then you just spin it round yeah, like that brilliant. to give, you, give yourself your center orb. Brilliant. Uh, and then, Obviously, what that does is that chucks out, while I've been doing that, that's been chucking out a little bit of light to yeah. light up the tunnel, but not all that much. Yeah. Um, so there were two extra things that I did. Um, the first one was a little bit of calligraphy. Yep. And for that, oi, um, I just used a, a homemade sort of LED yeah, gorgeous. strippy thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, basically just do it like that yeah, uh, and that's the one bit i'm not quite happy with because i didn't get the positioning quite right it's very difficult to judge i wanted it to basically hook up to the edges of the the central sphere perfectly yeah yep. i didn't get it quite right and if i did it again i would probably put some points down to specify that is exactly where it starts yeah uh, but in this case i did it by hand and didn't get it quite right and then the final thing is obviously what i wanted was for the tunnel to be illuminated as well yeah and although those tools chuck out a bit of light, they wouldn't have lit up much of the tunnel. So once I'd finished all of the, the design work, I walked back to the camera, triggered off the flash remotely a couple of times. Just in, And that's a new one on me. Normally, I, A, normally I don't use flashes. Uh, I've only been using them recently because I've been doing some sort of double exposure stuff on my yeah. own. And that means yeah. I need yeah. to be able to trigger stuff remotely. Totally. Um, and the other thing that I normally don't do, which that one is different, is normally I would never leave like a bare flash head in the middle of my shot and yep. just shoot it straight towards the camera. Because yep. I've always assumed it would kind of ruin the shot. But actually, it, if you do it right, it looks quite interesting because it gives you a starburst yeah. and it still gives you the backlighting. Um, well, it's still and it's draw, yeah, draw, like, I, I think if that wasn't there, it would still be there, but that pulled you in. That's like, mm. what is that? What's he making in there? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Because I say yeah. that's probably the first time that I've actually just left a flash sitting there in the middle of the shot and, and triggered it off. Um, and I might give it a shot on, on some other stuff. It's, it's an interesting effect. But the main thing is obviously what it does is it backlights the tunnel. Yeah. So you then get all of the texture. You oh. get all the interest. Um, totally, totally. Look, at backlight, backlighting is, is under underutilized and, and, and underrated. It's gorgeous, so man. Pretty much it. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, I, I, I think, w w like I was saying before, you know, I've been looking at, at it for a while now and I'm seeing a whole lot of things I didn't see before. And, and there's, um, I, I, I love the, uh, you're, you're so right. With the, I'm, I'm, I've never been a huge lover of, the, you know, the programmable stick things. Um, yeah. But there are so many times when it can add to an image and, and, I wouldn't have thought, I thought it was something different. And so that, because there's, for me, this, I don't give a shit if this is controversial or not. For me, programming a stick, whoops, that's a, and, and walking through an image going, you know, and having a picture of the Simpsons. Doesn't really do anything. No, I really like, Well, it's not really like penning. I, I, no. I, don't, I don't think so. Well, mate, look, I, I, I think, um, there's a bunch of your your photography that, that that I love. I know you use the uh, umbrella stick, the old yeah. umbrella. I know that's a huge part of your light painting. Um, when when it, whenever I look at you, you know the old classic V twenty four, the lead lens of V. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the the lead lenser ones. You know the 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 mystical one that I luckily have two now. Uh, I always thought it was one of those, but you're just using the umbrellas, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, um, amazing. I, I picked that up again. I think that was Ian Hobson, Rob McAvoy, a couple of people yeah. in the northeast where I live were using these things. And yeah, you just buy them off Amazon for 20 quid or whatever. And yeah, they're chop amazing. The top off, chop the top off them and, and they're brilliant. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Well, mate, it, it um, I think I think, like I say, you know, people people uh, and you were on your own this night, right? Uh, no, I was actually with my other half uh, that had actually gone out to do a bunch of pictures uh, with her doing some sort of double exposure stuff because I don't normally get, I normally work um, mainly on my own just because there's not is, that many people. Yeah, which is amazing. I, I think people, I think if you look at this, the complexity of it, you would immediately think that there was all sorts of people there making things happen. I think one of the things that, that I want to do, uh, you know, I will, we, we're going to have a look at some stuff on your Facebook page. I'm going to be pointing people there. There's some stuff that I remember you did. You once did a split orb. There was a, it was like an orb created, but it was, it was split across yeah. like that. Uh -huh. I remember, you know, for some strange reason, I'm kind of attracted to orbs. <laughs> to an orb, yeah. <laughs> but I was blown away when I saw that. And and um, I really want people watching this to, to you know, obviously I'll link to it. We'll, we'll have a look at it. But go and hang out and have a look at your, um, your, your Facebook page, which seems to be your main sort of your... Yeah, I've got an Instagram account, which I kind of use as a, a, a portfolio of the stuff that I really, really like. And I think one of Brilliant. the recent ones will be going up there, either the one that we're talking about now or the one that I did with my other half, which I sort of mixed it with a uh, a double exposure of some phone screen textury type stuff. Yeah, uh, But yeah, so that's where I sort of curate my, my best stuff because I, I, for me, it's very much a hobby. Uh, so I can't be bothered given I work in, in software spending time doing computery things like having a website and things yeah, like that yeah 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 no, uh, no, no, no. but so yeah we will facebook be, and instagram yeah so i'll be linking people through to your facebook and your instagram cool. the other thing that the other thing down in the in the comments i'll be linked through to a couple of uh um tutorials i know you've done um, oh yeah yeah which are great like you what are, i tell you i'll tell you something for a guy that shoots a ton of tutorials you you you've made me think <laughs> that what I love is that when you do your tutorials, you do it when it's light. Like, <laughs> I know that it seems like a, a dick thing to say, but like it's it's really obvious. I'm I'm I need to try and do that more. As you go through the process when there's light, and then yeah. you and then you do it in the dark again. But I love um I love the way you you uh, um describe things I, I you're very good at at because not only are you technically good but you have this ability to translate that so well and and i i know people that have done things with you in spain rave uh because could you speak fluent spanish <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not fluent, but, but some <laughs> Spanish. It's more fluent than mine, mate. Um yeah. Yeah, it's great. Look, um in the in in the the we, you and I could chat for a long time about light padding, but in uh the idea of these is to keep them nice and brief. Um yeah, yeah. breaking down this image for us is just gorgeous, mate. I've learned a couple of things. Uh it's an inspiring photograph. Uh people watching this we will be pointing them down the Tom Hill rabbit hole to go and enjoy, <laughs> to go and enjoy some of your beautiful stuff. If you want to, if you want, if you want inspiration to create uh, vibrant, technically superb images, um, then looking at your stuff, you just can't go wrong. Um, I have, yeah, that's, that's, that's it really. It's pretty straightforward. And, and I, um, and I thank you for spending some time with us. It's been an absolute pleasure. And we will, uh, you and I will probably go and hang in Spain and, and do a collaboration with Frodo. Yeah, Frodo as, as, as soon as this stuff is all, all sorted oh. out and we can go back to traveling again. Yeah, we'll either see you in the UK or we'll see you in Spain. We'll do that. Thank you so much, Mr. Tom Hill. Um, I appreciate I'm I'm 90% sure I've covered everything. Oh, one, hang on. D duh. <laughs> <laughs> Tom is an ambassador for Light Painting Paradise, and that's not a... Um, that's not a small thing. Uh, Ivan is 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 fussy. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> he is, yeah. yeah, he is, and he likes having uh, uh, gurus um, as part of the team. So you're you're an ambassador for Light Painting Paradise. Have I missed anything else, mate? Is there anything you would like to mention? No, I mean, I think the only thing that I would I would probably always say to everybody, um, you know, sort of people ask me about my my stuff a lot. The one thing that I always say is. Um, that 
most of what I do is actually the individual shapes are pretty easy and it's just done by adding more simple things to, to something that's already simple. So what I would say to, you know, cause people quite often they start off and they, they wonder why they can't get stuff that's complicated. Yep. And the answer is if you do something that's simple, think about adding something else afterwards. It's like, if you know how to create a, an orb by, by spinning an orb, yep. great. Try doing two of them uh, yep. or try getting another tool out and seeing what it looks like in the middle of the orb or try moving so halfway good. through. Yeah. Um, and that, that's really it for me is the, the experimentation of seeing what happens if you take one tool and then you layer it with another tool yep. uh, rather than just going, right, I've taken my blade, I've taken my yep. uh, rod or whatever, and I've done that. Yep. I'm done. It's like, well, do that and now get something else and do something else and yep, see how totally. they combine. That's a superb, superb piece of advice because that is something you are a master of is, is multiple elements in the same image. It's, um, I was chatting with uh, um, Kim Von Coles the other day and, and a piece of yep. advice she gave, which I loved, was become proficient at each element. If you want to use a blade, use a blade. Practice, 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 practice. Okay, I've got that sorted. Then do, so for a lot of your stuff are tube, right? Get, do a tube, do a tube, do a tube, do, and then yeah. combine the two, you know. Brilliant piece of advice, mate. Very much so. I mean, it sounds like Kim, Kim's got sort of the same approach as I had, and that my, my aim sort of always when I started light painting was essentially to learn and get good at, at something, yeah, and then learn and get good at another technique. And then once you've got those two techniques and you know yeah. how to use them, then work out how to combine them yeah. and then add another technique. So, you know, I started off with orbs, then I've moved on to some sort of circular, but not, not orby type yeah. stuff, some organic shapes. And now I'm yeah. trying to add mix in some calligraphy in there and stuff like yeah. that. Um, and it's just, yeah, just learn a new technique. And once you've learned a new technique, see how you can combine it with your previous ones rather than just doing it on its own. You know, something, this is, we're going a little over, but it's important. You remind, <laughs> you're reminding me of all these things. Uh, when we were in uh, Berlin, I was lucky enough to see you creating collaborative images with uh, Sam Mass. Um, oh, God, yes. The genius. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a, Sam has just designed, I've been trying to get him to finish a, a, a design for a tattoo. I'm, I, I, he, he, he's astonishing that man. And yeah. to see you two, I'm going to pop a couple of the images up now to see you guys creating images together was just, it was, I, I, I was sitting there in awe. It was so, so beautiful to watch. Um, anyway, again, Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, mate. We will, I have no doubt, this is going to be a very long series. I, I think, I think I'll, you know, I will, we will no doubt be doing this a few more times. Um, Not a problem for me. So thank you for joining me, Tom. I really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for coming and looking. Um, go down the rabbit hole of Tom Hill. <laughs> <laughs> you will not be disappointed. Magic. Cool. Thanks everyone. Cheers guys. I hope you enjoyed this visit to the School of Light. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be adding videos all the time. Head over to the Light Painting Tool Shop at the website. There's a huge array of tools I've made there for you to take on your light painting journey. Peace.